Dear rest of the AFC West, do anything. Grassy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Packers, a podcast where you don't have any Packers in, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. Seriously, anything. Grassy. And today, we are going to be breaking down and predicting the final division in the AFC, which means that we will have gone through every single division. And if for some reason this is the only one you're tuning into, what I'll do is I go through each team, talk about their offseason, predict their floor, how bad things could go this season, and their ceiling, how high they can go. Last year in 2023, I predicted the Chiefs to win the division. Got it. Nailed it. That was really difficult. So no one ever. With a 13-4 and four ceiling and a 9-8 and eight floor, they finished with an 11-6 and six record. In second place, I had the Chargers. That went wrong with a ceiling of 10-7 and seven and a floor of 7-10. and 10. They did not meet even my lowest of expectations and finished 5-12. and 12. In third place, I had the Broncos, which was correct. Ceiling of 10-7 and seven and a floor of 6-11. and 11. They finished with an 8-9 and nine record. And number four, I had the Raiders with a ceiling of 7-10 and 10 and a floor of 5-12. and 12. They surpassed my expectations and finished with a record of 8-9. and nine. And so, heading into this year, the big question is, can anyone win the division besides the Chiefs? The answer, probably not. But, maybe? Starting off. With the back-to-back Super Bowl champs, you got the Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs are so close to a three-peat. Two down, one to go. And last year was finally the year for somebody to take advantage in that division and actually win it. But no! Oh, God forbid some team put together competent football. Sometimes you were like, oh, maybe the Chargers could. Nope, that's gone. Oh, maybe the Raiders could. They poured like 60 points. Nope, Broncos. They had 70 points scored on them, but at least they came back and got a respectable record. And the Chiefs, they just kept on plowing along. They had to go play a wild card game just like the rest of us peasants. And then they won that one. And then they went to Buffalo and won. And then they went to Baltimore and won. And look, they're back-to-back champs. I'm not bitter. It's just, like, come on. It, the rest of the division, it's pathetic. And, of course, the Chiefs got better. They got Hollywood Brown, who I know is banged up right now, but they re-signed almost everybody on that D-line. And in the draft, they're like, let's go get the fastest wide receiver we can find in Xavier Worthy. And you just know they're going to be better because last year they weren't even dictated on their offense. They were dictated by their defense because their defense just decided to be really damn good. On the offensive side of the ball in 2023, the Chiefs were 15th in points per game scored, so they were right in the middle. They had the 19th best rushing offense. They were the 6th best pass passing offense, and over on the defensive side, they were second, the second best team in points allowed per game, 18th rush defense, and the fourth best passing defense, which they did lose Sneed, so maybe that will be worse. One can hope. And listen, I'm recording this on Sunday. This is going to come out on Friday. And who knows what's going to happen between then. Somehow the Chiefs are probably going to get better. Because this weekend, I watched Patrick Mahomes just mess around. He was upset with Travis Kelsey for not running the right route. So he's like, oh, I'm going to throw it behind the back. And the pass still got completed. God, they're so good. They're so good. The Packers beat them. So you can't even yell at me. You can't even blame me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just division, it's it's not good. But anyway, talking about where their floor and ceiling is going to be, the Chiefs are one of the best teams in the NFL. There's no doubt about this. I would not be surprised if they have a better record than they did last year. I have their floor at 10 and 7 because God obviously loves them, and their ceiling at 13 and 4. There's a couple games where I think they're going to be challenged. I think the Raiders' defense is going to be really, really good this year. They do have to play against like the Browns, for example. That's going to be a really interesting team to go against. They're going to play against the Texans, the Steelers, and of course, opening up the season against the Ravens. So there's definitely going to be some competition there, but the Chiefs can afford the luxury. They can lose a few games. Who cares? Because as long as they win the division, they're going to get a home playoff game, and you see what they can do. So yeah, Chiefs, win. Following that, you got the Vegas Raiders. The Raiders, 
They're a bit of an interesting team last year in which they got Jimmy Garoppolo, their entire fan base was whelmed, and that was the end of Jimmy Garoppolo. They have AOC back there who was not named the starter. Instead, Gardner Minshew, their recent pickup in the offseason, is going to be their starter, which I think makes the most sense. Let AOC sit and learn, and Gardner Minshew, who was pretty good last year, let's see what he could do with guys like Devontae Adams. And last year for the Raiders on offense... It was abysmal. The Raiders were 23rd in points per game scored. They were ranked 30th in rushing offense. Their offensive line when it came to run offense was not good. Josh Jacobs banged up, who is also no longer there. Thank you for that. And 23rd in passing offense. However, over on the defensive side, they were 9th in points allowed per game, 21st in rushing defense, and 12th in passing defense. They got Christian Wilkins from the Dolphins, who now gets to team up with Max Crosby, and I know offensive lines across the league are feeling some type of way about that. This is getting out of and now there are two of them. They did lose Nichols. They also brought in Madison from the Vikings, who, if you watch Madison play, I wouldn't be too excited about that. Instead, the biggest concern I have for the Raiders right now is on offense, but specifically the run game. However, they do have Zamir White, and I'm very excited for Dylan Lauby. They're really excited about him in camp, so let's see if he has a breakout season. And of course, during the draft, they got Brock Bauer, so another tight end to go with Michael Mayer. They also got JPJ for that offensive line. And when they kept Antonio Pierce, it seems like the Raiders are doing the right thing. They're slowly building this team. And I don't know if Gardner Minshew is going to be the long-term answer. I would think probably not with the Raiders, but I think he's going to make them very, very competitive. And I think that they could have one of the best defenses in the league. All of that being said, there is still some question marks about the offense, and that's where I have a little bit of pause. Their defense, I don't think is going to have any problems. They might not have to put up too many points to compete with these teams, but it is still a question mark. And when they're going up against teams like the Ravens, the Rams, the Bengals, the Dolphins, the Chiefs twice, it's a little bit of a cause for concern. So because of that, I have their floor at 6 and 11. I do not think they are going to be that bad, but just because their schedule and some concerns with the offense, I have to just be honest. And their ceiling, I wanted to give them a 10 and 7 record, and I wouldn't be super surprised if they are, but I capped them out at 9 and 8. And it's just because they have to play the Chiefs twice, and as I mentioned, it is not an easy road for them. Even if they wind up splitting with their division, their schedule is not easy. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if they hit up 10 and 7, but 9 and 8 is where I see their current ceiling right this second. Gardner Minshew might impress everybody. That offense might be better than a lot of people, including myself, anticipate. I imagine their defense is going to be very, very good. And after this season, when all the cards are down, we'll see what kind of identity they're going to have in the future. Following that, you got Brandon Perna's favorite team. You got the Denver Broncos. Well, the Broncos, they had no choice but to cut ties with Russell Wilson. What's going on? Why don't they like it? We spent $250 million on this. Who is basically playing for the Steelers for free. That's got to feel great. They also lost Judy. They lost Jewel. They lost Simmons. They lost Cushenberry. They lost a bunch of guys in this offseason, and it made sense. The amount of money that they're paying Russell Wilson, they're kind of in this mini rebuild, but there's room for excitement. I think this defense is still going to be pretty solid. And you might say, Tom, you mean the defense that allowed 70 points to be scored on them from the Dolphins? And I would say yes, because after that game, their defense got much better. Looking at their stats from last year, they were 19th in points per game scored, 18th in rushing offense, 24th in passing offense. You just got to pray that that's going to be better. 27th in points allowed per game on defense, and a lot of that is overinflated because of that 70 points. They were 30th in rushing defense. That wasn't good. And 22nd in passing defense. But they're still going to have a damn good secondary. And I know it's just practice, but their starters look pretty good against Jordan Love in that joint practice. So I'm just saying, maybe their defense is going to be better than a lot of people anticipate. Vance Joseph kept his job after everyone was calling for his head after that Dolphins game, and he improved that team. You just got to hope that Sean Payton's the guy to steer that ship. That all being said, they went and got Bo Nix in the draft, and Sean Payton, even though he won't name him as the starter, we can all imagine it's going to be Bo Nix. Of course, they brought in Zach Wilson, Stidham stayed, so they do have options if they decide not to start the rookie. But again, looking at their schedule, it is not a walk in the park. They're away against the Seahawks. They're away against the Buccaneers. They got to play the Jets, the Ravens, the Chiefs, and the Raiders, who they also can't beat on top of that. And so just like the other teams within their division, they are going to have a tough road to try and navigate. So because of that, I have their floor at 5-12. and 12. We just don't know what this offense is going to look like with a rookie QB. There are definitely concerns there. And even though I think their defense is going to be pretty good, we just need to see 
see the guy play. So when it comes to their ceiling, I actually have them having the same ceiling as the Raiders because their games at home aren't too bad. They got the Steelers, who I think will be tough, but then they got the Raiders, Chargers, Panthers, Falcons, Browns, Colts, and Chiefs. I can definitely see them losing a few of those games, but they might win just enough to give them a winning record. And if Bo Nix is any good, I don't think a winning record would surprise anybody. They could be one of the worst teams in the league, which is why their floor is so low for me. But Broncos country, let's do it again. And finally, you got the LA Chargers. The Chargers. Oh boy. They went and got their guy. They fired Brandon Staley after the Raiders demolished him on Thursday Night Football. They bring in Harbaugh and rejoice, you're free. And then Justin Herbert gets hurt already to start the season. So Coach Harbaugh can't be too happy. Myself. And it became very clear what kind of team Harbaugh wants to run in LA with their offseason and their draft. He went and got both running backs from his brother's team and bringing over Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. They brought in DJ Shark because they needed wide receivers because Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are both gone. They drafted Joe Alt so they could protect Justin Herbert and make that run game even better. They, of course, got the one and only Lad McConkey as well. Legend. And looking at their stats last year, they were 21st in points per game scored on offense, 25th rushing offense, 13th pass offense and over on defense they were 24th in points allowed per game they were the 17th best rushing defense and 30th in passing defense which those numbers got to get way 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 better they did keep Khalil Mack who had a resurgence last year and was looking really really good of course you still have Joey Bosa and the Chargers are kind of just like in this weird in-between where I think they got the right coach I love Justin Herbert to death. It's just going to kind of be a rebuild. I imagine that their run game is going to get much better. When Herbert is healthy, I think that offense is going to function a little bit better. Can they improve on the defense? That's going to be the ultimate question. And taking a look at their schedule, again, it's not going to be the easiest. Right now, I have their floor at 7-10. and 10. I think a change in coach is going to definitely help, which is going to give them a better record than they had last year of 5-12. and 12. However, I'm not super-duper high on them. I don't think they're making the playoffs or going to the Super Bowl this year. But again, that's not the goal. Just see the team that you have, go in the direction that Harbaugh wants to go in, and just start to improve from there. So because of that, I have their ceiling at 9-8. and eight. A lot of the reason why they're going to be 9-8, I think, is because of Justin Herbert and what he's able to do. I'm a really big fan of Justin Herbert. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting season for the Chargers. It is a bit of a rebuild, but if they do it correctly, it could work out pretty well. So, yes, I have three teams predicted to finish at 9-8. and eight. One, of course, will be the Chiefs. No surprise there. Two, I'm actually going to go with the Raiders finishing second because of their defense. I think it's going to be that good. Three, I have the Chargers. And four, with the lowest floor, I have the Denver Broncos. Sorry, Perna. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. You know, I saw me at TomGrossyComedy.com or at TomGrossyComedy. All social media see down below. A big shout and thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for supporting this channel. And thank you so much for watching. We are so close to football and I cannot wait. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, go pack go. I did it. I wrote out all four of these and recorded all of them in a day. Watch them all become irrelevant by the end of this week while I'm at camp because that's just the way the cookie always comes.